This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 500 people to use the link in the description get their first two months free. In 2008, China hosted its first ever Olympic Games. Over 10,000 athletes from 200 countries competed in 300 summer events. But for China, it was about much more than athletics. In many ways, this was Beijing's grand entrance to the world. As the most watched televised event in history at the time, it was the perfect opportunity to show off a healthy, happy, prosperous China to an international audience. One that has long been confused about and often deeply suspicious of the Middle Kingdom. So its government spared no expense. The city was given an extreme makeover. The kind you can afford when your economy relies on pouring concrete on any surface you can find, and then pouring again because why not? More labor means more economic growth. Nine billion dollars was spent improving public transit, doubling the size of the subway. Ugly power lines were buried underground, flowers planted, and 20 new buildings constructed. Like the iconic Bird's Nest, which held the opening ceremony on August 8, 2008 at exactly 8.08 p.m. A lucky number in China. The four-hour event cost $100 million, 7,000 per second. And flying overhead, you would have noticed that although it was raining elsewhere that night, the sky above the open roof stadium was perfectly clear. Only minutes after the ceremony ended, the clouds magically reappeared. The event was so important and China so determined that it changed the weather, literally shooting chemicals at the sky with rocket launchers. And yet, even when its image mattered the most, China still couldn't control its pollution. The city was covered in its signature, dangerously thick, grey smog. Air quality was so bad that some athletes changed events. Others decided not to compete at all. But what looks like a hopeless environmental disaster, China sees as an amazing economic opportunity. It's now on a quest to clear its air, clean its energy, and grow its economy. Not despite these things, but because of them. There are two ways to look at environmental impact, depending on whose payroll you're on. Per capita, China's CO2 emissions, for example, are nothing special, about the same as Poland or Mongolia. Nowhere near a rich country like the US, the United Arab Emirates, or especially Qatar. Wow. But in total, China makes up a quarter of the world's emissions. With a population of 1.3 billion, its problem is that it's just so darn big. As the world's largest car market, China has as many motor vehicles as the US has people. 322 million. So not only does it have that fun LA traffic, but also the kind of pollution that stops planes from landing. The kind of pollution where you can't see your fingers. The kind you can vacuum up, condense, and make a brick out of. But unlike America, where the automobile means freedom, and freedom, well, that's our thing. The right to commute in a 16-seat SUV by yourself is probably written in the Constitution. China can and does just say no. Cities like Beijing, Guangzhou, and Guiyang only issue a tiny number of new license plates a year through a lottery. Although tiny is kind of an understatement. The chance of winning is approximately 1 in 783, or was until Beijing lowered the quota from 90,000 to 40, and now your chances are 1 in 2031. Locals joke they're more likely to win the actual lottery. One government official was arrested for accepting bribes of 30,000 US dollars for a single plate. Shanghai, on the other hand, auctions them off to the highest bidder, with an average price of $14,022, nearly twice China's per capita GDP, and considerably more than most of the cars they're attached to. So good luck buying a car unless you have very deep pockets, powerful friends, or amazing luck. Even so, there are limitations. In Beijing, the last number of your license plate determines which days you can drive on. For example, right now, until April 7th, numbers 1 and 6 can't drive on Monday, 2 and 7 can't on Tuesday, 3 and 8 on Wednesday, and so on. 
all are allowed on the weekend. The numbers switch four times a year, and rule breakers get three points on their license, 12 of which suspends your ability to drive. These restrictions have helped reduce pollution, but only so much. The air quality index, which measures pollution, is usually in the range of 50 to 100 in cities like LA, San Diego, and most of southern China. In the north, it's often three, four, even five times that much. Now, it's easy to see these numbers, think that China focuses only on economic growth, and conclude that its government really doesn't care that much about pollution. But that's not entirely true. For one, healthcare is really expensive. Pollution kills an estimated 1.6 million people in the country a year. It also has a significant impact on tourism. What makes this issue so unique is that it can't be hidden. Smog is there for everyone to see, and not in some far western province, but in the capital, where politicians live and work. So even Chinese-owned state media reports on the problem. And while it isn't exactly known as the protest capital of the world, it has seen a few. If that wasn't incentive enough, enter electric cars. Perhaps nowhere on earth is better suited to lead the EV revolution. Millions of Chinese are entering the middle class, looking to buy their first car, and have no stigma against electric vehicles. It's great for local companies, it helps grow the larger economy, and it's good for everyone's lungs. So it's no surprise that China buys more EVs than the rest of the world combined. In the US, there's California, and everywhere else. The Golden State buys almost 10 times more EVs than second place New York. In Palo Alto, you turn your head when you see a car that's not a Tesla. China is to the world what California is to the US. It's making EVs irresistible. Like police cars and ambulances, they're exempt from the last number rule, and have a separate line to apply for a license plate. Many don't even require a driver's license at all, with a top speed of around 40 miles an hour. Smart cars cost twenty to $30,000. These cost about one. The government has given Tesla permission to build a factory outside Shanghai, converted all Shenzhen buses to electric, and doubled its charging infrastructure in the last year. Of course, cars are only part of the problem. China also burns an insane amount of coal, one of the worst environmental offenders. Even India pales in comparison. But these numbers are somewhat misleading. There are three common types of coal plants, subcritical, supercritical, and ultra-supercritical. The first being low temperature and less efficient, the last being high temperature and more efficient. Over time, China has been building fewer and fewer subcritical plants and more and more efficient ones. By 2020, it's estimated that every Chinese coal plant will be more efficient than every coal plant in America. China doesn't have nearly as much natural gas, so instead it's largely moving straight to renewable energy, which it now produces more of than any other country. Like electric cars, its government has an economic incentive. Compared to fossil fuel, renewable energy usually creates far more jobs. In fact, coal employs fewer Americans than fast food chain Arby's. Already, Beijing's air pollution has fallen by 35%. This, according to experts, could save 20 million residents over three years of their lives. And even when its weaker economy in 2018 made car sales fall to a two-decade low, electric and hybrid cars continued to grow. At a time when the US is removing EV tax credits and environmental protections, it's more important than ever that China take the lead. Its electric car revolution is just getting started. It's anyone's guess how the economy will change in the next 20 years, but it's always safe to invest in yourself. Why not learn about the stock market so you can invest in clean energy or new battery technology with this class on Skillshare? Or watch Kurzgesagt teach you how to animate your thoughts into a YouTube video like theirs. You already like watching videos, so why not watch your favorite creator dive deeper into a subject they know and care a lot about? Skillshare is full of professional photographers, designers, CEOs, chefs even, who have lots of knowledge and experience to share with you. 
Over 7 million people are already learning with Skillshare, and you can try it out totally free. Get two months just by being one of the first 500 people to use the link in the description.